Yes. So I think we are on target. Okay, so we are going to look at the internal assessment today. And as I said, it mirrors the EFE. Um, we're looking at it specifically at the IFE. And as I said, for you to understand how to do the IFE, you need to understand the environmental business, the elements of the environmental business, how that environmental business works, and other things you would need to be able to do. What other things would you need to do in order to do the IFE? You would have to have done the your SWOT analysis. And before you do a SWOT, what kind of analysis you need to do? Your PESEL analysis, right? So you need to do your PESEL analysis, then your SWOT analysis. And there's one other tool we have utilized in the course that everybody should know, but it really some students are still struggling with it. Porter's Five Forces Model. So by now, everybody should know Porter's Five Forces Model extremely well and know the five dimensions, which are bargaining power of the suppliers, bargaining power of the substitutes, rivalry among competing firms, new entrants to the market. And remember, folks, it is bargaining power. And when you do the assessment, you're looking to determine what? Um? When you do the assessment of bargaining power of consumer or buyers, what, are you, what will you do when you're looking for bargaining power to determine right, whether the bargaining power is strong or high or bargaining power is low? And what gives a customer high bar strong bargaining power? Options. Options, and it, it means that you will do your competitive analysis. So we go into the IFE, and remember we said it's dealing now with the internal audit, and there are some key terms that we spoke about before that come up again, and those key terms are, are you going ahead too quickly for me? Hey. No way did it do that. So again, we need to know the basic concept. Hey. Why is that doing that? Give me a minute. I'll just do it from here. So they said one of the concepts that you need to know is to distinguish the RBV from the IO. And we know the IO says that IO says that the 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 external factors are more important than the internal. And you should know the three dimensions. Anybody in the back, right? The guy in the hat there. What are the three dimensions of the RBV? That is looking back. Yes, sir. Next to you, the lady next to you. Three elements of the resource-based view. Guy next to you. That's Mr. Latchman. 
Yes, sir. Three elements of the RBV. The lady here. Yes, three elements of the RBV. Yes. Right here. Anybody, three elements of the RBV. Resources must be rare, hard to imitate, imitate and hard to substitute. And that's what, and there are three characteristics for the RBV, physical resources, human resources, and organizational resources. And that's what the elements of the RBV are. So please make sure you know these resources, the characteristics that encompass the resource-based view. So all this is saying the elements of the internal assessment. Maybe next week we are going to do the financial ratio analysis separately because sometimes, depending on which year it is, we sometimes have the ratio, financial ratio question as a compulsory question. So I urge you, as I said at the first class, if you're not comfortable with your accounting and financial ratios, please from now begin to network with your fellow colleagues to get au fait with financial ratio analysis. But I believe next week, We'll touch on financial ratio analysis. So here is the IFE. And uh, the IFE, similar to the EFE, to the, has the same columns in terms of in the factors. The only thing, instead of external factors, it focuses on the internal factors, which would relate to those internal factors are obtained from the SWOT. Which aspect of the SWOT? The strengths, weaknesses of the SWOT. And the same pattern for the weights. What happens to the weight column? The weight column, what happens to the weight column? Must total one. So you divide your strengths from your weaknesses. You have your ratings column. You multiply the weight by the rate to give you your weighted score. And then you have your total weighted score, which is 2.85. So from this chart now we can see, somebody can tell me which factor, factors in the stream seem to be most critical. Which factors or factor in the stream seems more, most critical? Right, the consumer report and uh, Gateway is diversifying into the non-PC products. That's the strength. And it has a three rating, which means that it is a, a minor strength. So it is interpreted that Gateway seems to be taking advantage of this strength, which would give it ultimately, if it continues to get good ratings in the strength, it ultimately could lead to gaining a competitive advantage. And we see again for consumer report, it gets a rating of four, which means it is a major strength that this is a core um, success factor for gateway, right? So if you were doing in the exam, sometimes we give you the whole matrix. If you were in the exam, you would focus on the most critical ratings and most critical weightings. The most critical weightings and most critical ratings. So you would see here, you would mention then the consumer report. It got a four, which means it's doing exceptionally well. And then you would identify the other one, diversifying into the PC mark, non-PC market, it got a three, right? And then for the weaknesses, the ones that stand out, you have almost no budget for research and development and then shortage of cash and weak performance in the overseas market. So for number seven, if we say that it is a weak performance in the overseas market, it means that Gateway, from a marketing perspective, was not doing what kind of strategy. From a marketing perspective, since it has not really gone into the, or having a weak performance in the overseas market, what does it suggest about its strategies in going international or global. What marketing strategies they might not be doing well? 
what kind of marketing strategy goes overseas? Correct. It means that Gateway has not been engaged in an effective market development strategy. If it was staying within the US and trying to expand market share, it would have been engaging in market penetration. Excellent. So this is again how we're going to interrelate to your marketing strategies, as I said to the beginning. So in the exam conditions, when you are analyzing an IFE, this is the kind of analysis you need to bring. Linking it to marketing strategies, there might be some financial strategies. If you look at number two, shortage of cash due to successive losses. What kind of ratios would help a company identify whether it has a shortage of cash? What ratios would help a company or ratio identify shortage of cash? Yes, sir. Liquidity ratios, give me some examples. The current ratio, why current ratio? What does the current ratio do? Sorry? Right, but what does it do? What does the current ratio do? Sorry? Yes, go ahead. Right, the assets you have to cover your short-term liabilities. But what's the deficiency then of the current ratio? Because it includes inventory, and why is that a problem? Because inventory is not easy to move, and if you need cash to cover short-term liabilities, you need then indeed, what ratio then allows you to take out your inventory? your quick ratio. And if the scores of a quick ratio and current ratio are almost the same, what does it tell you? I don't want to hear you. <laughs> if the scores in the current ratio and quick ratio are the same, right in the back of the picture, what's happening there? Next to you, the young lady. And the lady to the left. If the scores of a current ratio and quick ratio are almost the same, what does it tell you about the company? The guy next to her. Right, so what kind of business is it likely to be? Services. Services. Company into computer engineering and programming as opposed to a company into manufacturing computers, right? So folks, again, under exam condition, these are the kind of tips you need to look for because sometimes we give you ratios like that and some students are stumped and they say, but this doesn't make sense. The current ratio and the quick ratio are nearly the same. And ask me if it's a mistake. They put it in their hand and ask me the exam, sir, is this a mistake? The current ratio and the quick ratio and quick ratio and current ratio are basically the same. Right? So we want you to be able to say that this company may be some high-tech industry that does not really they're into services, computer engineering, computer programming. So they don't need inventory. They need then what do they need that will give them a competitive advantage? And what about the resources? Excellent. And what you want in your human resources that will give you a distinctive competence? Excellent. And what kind of knowledge should they have? Right, they use the resource base for you to analyze your system. Excellent. But what kind of knowledge sh should they have? It's a particular set, set of knowledge that gives you an advantage. Excellent. It's called tacit knowledge. You should get that from your HR. And tacit knowledge is knowledge that is not trainable. It is expertise that is developed over time. So folks, that is your IFE looking again, as they say, similar to the EFE. Right? The only difference is would be in the ratings. So if, for example, you had been, like here now, a weakness, high operating expense. What kind of ratio? Somebody else, right in the back, the lady right here, in the back. High operating expense. What kind of ratio would help us to determine what is happening there? What ratio would help us to understand that? High operating expense. What, what do we want to look at? What ratios do you want to look at? Anybody? Your profit margins, but which profit margins? Their number, then profit margins. Your net profit margin. Sorry, you might want, you look at your 
Well, eventually, you might want to look at that ratio, depending on how bad your, 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 your income statement is looking. Right? But again, your gross profit margin, some people say operating profit margin, right? your net profit margin. Almost no budget for R&D, it gets a one. So why might this be a challenge for Dell? Almost no budget for R&D versus Dell, 18% of revenue. What's the problem there? Right in the back, the guy right here in the back, right down there. What's the problem with item one of a weakness? Guy right to the back here, yes. Yes, I mean you. Sorry? Oh, you just came in? But well, that's you mean your brain is fresh. <laughs> I mean, you got a lot of energy. <laughs> oh, I apologize. The lady next to you. Yes, madam. <laughs> yes, please. Item one high operating expense. No, sorry, no budget. Sorry, item two almost no budget for RD. What is that? What's the issue here for Dell? What's the problem for Dell? Anybody want to say anybody? Let me hear the lady with the pink flower in her hair. Lady with the pink, hello. Yes, what is it? What's the problem with Adele? Almost no budget for R&D versus uh, Pagame, sorry, versus Dell. What's the problem? Guy next to you, what's the problem? Right here. Yes. Huh? Well, it's not it's not it's not so what is the budget? But what particular thing in the column is most critical for a computer company? And what about the R&D? Right. And what for a computer company dealing with all this technology? We mentioned in week one or two some critical things that would give a, a company like this a competitive edge where you don't have your manufactured products. What will give them that edge? Sorry? The. Where the person? Put your hand on me, see. I'm hearing the voice, but I can't see you. You said that. Who is it? Yes, go ahead, buddy. Hello? After sales service, yeah, after sales service could be important too, but something just before, something before after sales service in the actual um, work process. What allows IT companies to, get, to gain competitive advantage and to be successful? Go ahead. Excellent. She said patents and copyrights, and they give you, we call them what kind of assets? I gave you those in week two, one or two. Excellent on the ball. Proprietary assets. Excellent. A proprietary asset is something that is intangible, so it's a, cop it's a patent or copyright, and that it is licensed that if you try to use it, I can bring legal action against you. So again, we are integrating a lot of the stuff we dealt with in weeks one, two, and three. So excellent. Proprietary assets. And we gave you those notes back in week one and two, so you don't need to write them over. So that is the internal factor evaluation matrix. Any questions? Anybody wants me to go over anything with the IFC? Again, you look at your overall score. It's a 2.85, which means 2.85. The rating says that it is above average, which is not bad. It's above average, which means that it's doing pretty well. It has to focus on its weak areas and continue to build on the strength. Yeah, that's a very good question. Yeah, just what we did is what you do. So when you get one of these in the exam, you start by looking at your strength column, your weaknesses column, and what are you trying to identify? 
You're trying to identify what first? Sorry? You're trying to identify the ones that have the highest weights. And why do you want to identify the ones with the highest weights? Because it will tell you which of these factors are most critical and most important. And when you identify the most critical and important ones, you can zero in on them. And then you can start to look then at the ratings. And just as we did, if you are saying then that item 4 has a weight of 10, it needs its most important, one of the most important strengths. It has a rating of 4. And just what we did, you need to explain as we did just now. That's what you will do in your exam. So we basically adapt to the exam question, right? In the Consumer Report, Gateway, the, um, in 2002, and it, the strong recommendation for Gateway, the 500X, et cetera, as number one, and Gateway seems to be taking advantage of that strength, which suggests that if it is saying that the report gives them number one, what are the positive implications for Gateway in a very practical sense? Sorry? But see something before that, they are rated number one. How can they benefit from it, from this consumer report? Increase sales. Who said that? Increase sales. It means we can now promote and tell people we are rated number one, and you will get increased sales because people will see, well, they're number one. They might have the best product. So they have increased sales. And when they get increased sales, it means that they're going to get, sorry, increased market share. Right? They got increased, and when you get increased sales, you get increased cash, increased revenues. And when you get increased revenues, you have to control your, your costs. And when we look at value chain, we'll get into that. So you mentioned that, that they could get increased sales because they're rated for me that they are doing very well in taking advantage of this particular strength where they're rated number one. Right? And that's all you do in the exam. You look for the other one, number six. Um, diversifying into the non-PC products means that is again it's diversifying its market to maybe to look into some other products that are yes yeah 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 the, the um the weighted score yes okay. correct yeah that's an error the point, thanks for that. The point that number six is gateway is diversifying. But we need to qualify this further. How do we qualify this? It said gateway is diversifying. This needs to be further qualified. And go back to your marketing knowledge. No, I don't about diversifying. It said gateway is diversifying. Yes? So tell us about diversifying, folks. In marketing, you would have learned about diversification. Is there one type of diversification? Is there one type of diversification? What are the types of diversification? Anybody? Types of diversification, you have related and unrelated. You have related diversification and unrelated. So what is unrelated diversification? Right here, my friend. That lent me the clip. I am paying you back for lending me the clip. <laughs> yep, right. Somebody who did marketing, what is unrelated diversification? Right, you're pretty right, but the language that we use is that you are moving to a, an operational process that has a distinctly different value chain. A distinctly different value chain. And when we start to speak about value chain, shortly you would understand how value chain is related to diversifying. Right, excellent. Any more questions? Anything anybody doesn't 
wants me to clarify on the IFE. Sorry? No, if you have questions, I'll take questions. Okay, we now go on to the value chain, which is, just give me a sec so we can close this out. <coughs> 